Hi. Um, so, hello everybody. My name is Matt Pearson. I'm the product owner of the Guidewire Predict platform uh, coming from you live today from headquarters in San Mateo, California. Um, I'm going to talk today about how AWS uh, helped us improve the Guidewire Predict platform. Uh, just a little bit of context, uh, Guidewire is an enterprise software company. Our flagship products are Claim Center and Billing Center. Um, we're very literal at Guidewire, so what those products they do is exactly what they do. They help manage claims and policies. The Guidewire Predict platform is our artificial intelligence and machine learning platform that takes data coming off of those large enterprise software platforms and then drives insights back into the core workflow. Um, let's go to the next slide real quick. It's just the, the list of presenters here. Uh, I already did my part again, Matt Pearson, product owner of the Predict platform. I'll let my other two co-presenters introduce themselves. All right, I'll go first. Uh, my name is Shahat uh, Nagavaja. I'm an AWS processor. I'm a senior machine learning engineer. Prashad? Uh, oh. We have technical difficulties. Um, maybe Matt, uh, you can go ahead if uh, you yeah. may join. Sure, no problem. All right, so before we kind of double click into some of the, the technical details of how AWS is helping us, I want to just give a couple of minutes to set the business context and then start talking about the business challenges. And then that will lead into more of the, the technical aspects. So at this point in every insurance company's journey of machine learning and artificial intelligence, the space is mature enough that all of our customers or potential customers know that they need to leverage and harness this sort of technology in order to make better decisions. So there are certain specific things that we do within the the PNC insurance space, but you could broaden these out to just any vertical anywhere. But in our space, we use it to select the right risk, price accordingly. If there is a claim or a bad experience, then we help improve that claim outcome. And then of course on the right, what every insurance company is trying to do is they're trying to win and retain the best customers. Uh, can you go to the next slide? The dirty little secret within this industry though, is that most insurers are struggling to do this. And what we're showing across the screen here are the three biggest reasons that we come across. For executives and managers, they're unable to provide real-time insights into decision makers. So they might have some sort of ML or AI capabilities, but they can't get into the hands of people that actually change the trajectory of that business. Uh, for the data scientists, a lot of times they just, uh, they lack the data or the ability to, to, to get the data into a prep modeling data set to actually start the process of building models. And then finally, on the right, there's almost always an IT constraint. So they have limited capacity to be able to service all the requests coming in from the business. Next slide. So insurers need are three main things. They're just kind of going up this, this staircase here. Foundationally, they need data collection and curation. Going up, they need a place to then take that data and have a model building experience and deployment. And then finally, they need the capability to embed these insights back into a workflow so the users can see the insights on the pane of glass, make a decision, and help improve the business. And, and without doing any of these, being able to leverage AI for better business decisions is just simply impossible. You have to solve these foundational pieces first. Next slide. Fortunately, this is where Guidewire Predict comes in. Uh, within our platform, we offer capabilities at each one of these steps. It's just kind of going up uh, the staircase here. Starting at the bottom, we have a build section within our module where we bring internal data coming off a core system, cobble it together with external industry data, and then have it available for modeling uh, using AI and ML techniques. At that point, it's not just good enough to have a model, you have to deploy it. And a lot of times you're orchestrating multiple models together in order uh, to solve one specific use case for a solution. And then finally, going up to the top, you need to embed those insights back into the core system. Our core systems at Guywire, again, are Policy Center and Claim Center. And this is where we actually allow the user to see the insights, make the best decision for the company, and then improve the bottom line. 
Uh, next slide. So this is where we're going to start pivoting in to go into more of the technical details. Just to zoom out and let you know where Guidewire Predict is on their journey. Uh, originally, Guidewire Predict built all of this stuff proprietarily. So we, we, we hosted our own stuff, we built our own algorithms, and that's the way that we competed for many, many years. We are in the middle of a multi-year transition of offloading all of that proprietary algorithm and managing our own services and getting it all over to AWS. And then we put a nice wrapper and a nice user experience around it and then present that to our end users. However, in the last year or so, we had come across some challenges kind of on this, on this growth path. And there's a lot on the screen, and I'm not going to you know, go into detail on each one of them because I don't want to steal the thunder from my co-presenters. But uh, starting on the left-hand side, we were having some trouble um, with the, the performance of a couple of our algorithms that we were having. So when we moved from proprietary uh, to AWS, we were seeing uh, a, sl a slightly slower experience for our end users that we had hoped. Um, so when we approached AWS, we had this audacious goal of let's take what we're currently seeing at roughly uh, 18 minutes and let's drive that down to two minutes in terms of like how long it takes for an algorithm to actually execute. Um, we also had some needs on the hyperparameter uh, optimization. We were using it for some of the algorithms that we were exposing to our customers, but we really wanted to make it available for, for everything that we were offering. Um, and then finally, uh, one of the things that we're always doing within our platform is we're expanding uh, the type of algorithms that we make available to our end customers. And what we were doing here is we were trying to find a way to make deep neural networks uh, actually usable for our end customers. Uh, so going into the into the middle column here, the solutions, and again, I'm going over this slightly because I don't want to steal the thunder from my colleagues, um, is that we're working on reducing the warm-up time of the containers. Uh, we replaced our legacy uh, autom automated boosting model with uh, XGBoost pipeline. And then we uh, introduced deep neural networks that were deterministic and that uh, were very agreeable or adopted heavily by our user base. Um, so then going on to the right-hand column in terms of our business results, um, we had a couple customers that were very vocal about they wanted increased speed. Because we executed on this, we were able to drop um, the warm-up time. We were able to retain two of our long-standing customers, which uh, results in almost half a million in ARR uh, uh, for Predict. Um, we also, the, with the hyperparameter optimization, we were seeing that roughly 13 customers that were actively using this as soon as we introduced it. And again, mapping that to business results, uh, that mapped to keeping about 2.6 million in ARR happy and staying with us. And then finally, the introduction of the deep neural networks, uh, we were seeing it actually help more on the, on the sales side. It was coming up a lot in RFPs. And it was allowing us to actually compete with much, uh, much larger insurers, which is someplace that Guidewire always wants to be. Um, so we're very grateful uh, for that help. Uh, so that's, that's the, the high level business overview and then a light touch on the, on the technical piece. And then I'll hand it over to Shrat to talk about the next steps. Great. Hi, uh, thanks, Matt. Um, so um, we'll go a bit deeper into the three, uh, three streams of work where Prosa uh, partnered with Guidewire and to help them resolve these bottlenecks. Um, so the first one was uh, around the MLOps. Uh, it was regarding reducing the warm-up time for StageMaker pipelines. Um, so uh, if you're not familiar with uh, StageMaker pipelines, it's essentially uh, an end-to-end -end workflow where you can orchestrate an ML uh, basically model training. Uh, before that, you, you start with data processing, train the model, and then you can evaluate the model. So SageMaker provides you these independent steps called, uh, uh, for example, like a processing step, training step, uh, and then evaluation steps where you can do all these independent of each other. Um, so uh, it, the fact that it provides you so many features is, uh, is uh, powerful because uh, you can uh, kind of uh, bring in different algorithms which SageMaker provides uh, pretty seamlessly, and then you can uh, make use of uh, you know, uh, AWS other services to scale up and down as you need. Um, 
But uh, the disadvantage is that each of these steps uh, usually have a warm up time because they are independent. Uh, like the underlying service has to kind of start the container, create you know initial uh, uh, dependencies. Uh, so the startup time for each step is usually about uh, anywhere from two to four minutes. Um, and when uh, what Guidewire was finding out was uh, for some of their customers, even when they are using small data sets, um, the overall time to execute the pipeline was very long. So uh, the customers were expecting like for small data sets, this should finish in like a few minutes, but it was taking up to uh, almost close to 18 to 20 minutes. And this created like a bad user experience. Um, in order to help uh, alleviate this issue, um, we kind of looked at this uh, overall pipeline, see where the bottlenecks were and try to come up with alternatives so, in her, so that we can accelerate the entire process. Um, so one thing we found out was um, the processing step, um, which uh, essentially takes the data and then uh, creates uh, features out of it. Uh, was uh, taking a long time, especially to uh, warm up. Um, so um, we added a condition step, you can see on the right here, where uh, this condition step, what it does is uh, it checks what is the size of the data set, which is being uh, input. And then it checks some other parameters, things like uh, number of features, uh, the machine learning model will require um, and then how many columns are numeric, categorical, things like that. And then based on that, it makes a judgment whether should we really use a processing step or can we use a lightweight alternative, which is the, the Lambda step. Um, so the Lambda step is a kind of like a flexible option SeekMaker Pipeline provides, which can be used to do uh, uh, anything you want, pretty much any kind of processing you want except that this has to be uh, completed within the you know the lambda timeout limit so uh, between 10 to 15 minutes the whole execution has to complete and uh, after that uh, the the lambda step will time out so um, the condition step will determine if um, a particular data set is uh, uh, sufficiently small so that a lambda step can handle it and once it could determine that, yes, it is small enough. Uh, the Lambda step would uh, com complete this bucketing encoding process and then um, move it to the next step, which is the uh, twinning step. Um, by doing this, what we could do was essentially reduce the warm up time of these individual steps from uh, four minutes to uh, under two minutes, because, simply because Lambdas can initiate much faster. Um, and overall, we could reduce the processing time to uh, eight and a half minutes, uh, all the way from um, 18 to 20 minutes. Um, so this was a significant move forward, and uh, it helped improve the customer experience uh, for, for Guidewire. Um, on top of that, uh, <clears throat> we also work closely with our SageMaker service team, the SageMaker uh, processing team uh, who uh, uh, we're testing like changes to the processing job infrastructure. And uh, <clears throat> this is estimated to reduce the warm up time for the processing jobs itself to under two minutes. Um, and then we uh, coordinated with uh, the processing team to provide early access for a customer to test and then verify that they can see the improvements in the pipeline as well. Um, so uh, this was the first. Um, stream of work where uh, we addressed the issue of the warm-up time, which was coming again and again as a, uh, as a major issue for uh, many of Guidewise customers. And then the second stream of work was around uh, hyperparameter optimization. Um, so here, um, as Matt was saying, uh, Guidewise Predict uh, was moving a lot of the legacy models to use the, the SageMaker uh, platform. Um, so as part of that, uh, we also wanted to support um, these models to use the SageMaker provided uh, hyperparameter tuning pipelines. 
So uh, hyperparameters, uh, as you know, in machine learning models are these parameters which you can tune to optimize you know, how fast the model can run, how accurate it is, um, pretty much uh, um, make, it, uh, make it more suitable for your use case. Um, so uh, the users would want to use these uh, latest and the greatest hyperparameter tuning uh, strategies which, uh, which allows them to create you know, more accurate models and then which also run faster. Um, so we replaced um, legacy uh, automated booster model uh, with the StageMaker uh, XG Boost uh, hyperparameter tuner pipeline. So this provided uh, a bunch of new options for customers uh, in order to uh, conduct the hyperparameter tuning. Um, and then we reduced uh, detected uh, in the code base uh, by simplifying uh, you know, the, the hyperparameter tuning um, calls to the functions um, and then added uh, better error handling, uh, provided support to more options such as grid search and hyperband. Uh, again, again, for the customers to have you know, um, access, easy access to all these uh, newer strategies, which are much faster to run than the earlier uh, hyperparameter tuning options. Um, and then, as I said, uh, we uh, improved the error handling to ensure that customers provide the appropriate inputs. If not, they will get an error message, which helps them uh, provide the correct input, correct data type and resources, et cetera, for the hyperparameter tuning. Um, again, here with uh, service team, we added uh, two new uh, feature requests. Uh, one was to uh, ask for supporting different data types as parameters, uh, uh, because uh, depending on the use case, uh, the customers would want to tune for hyperparameters, which are you know arrays or dictionaries. Um, so we would want SageMaker pipelines to support these uh, in order to um, enable these um, new use cases. And then uh, also uh, allowing next nested condition steps. Um, again, this is to allow uh, complex use cases and make it more flexible so that the uh, customers can uh, kind of set up their hyperparameter configurations uh, and then run the configuration even in, in complex scenarios. So these are the two uh, streams of work around uh, ML ops. And then the third one was, is around uh, ML modeling, um, which uh, my colleague uh, Fashad was leading. Um, so I want to check if uh, Fashad is online. Yes, I am. <laughs> Great. Hey, right. sure. All right. Uh, thanks, Sharath. Uh, so uh, Farshad Harirchi, I'm a senior data scientist at uh, Pro uh, AWS ProServe. And uh, as uh, Matt and Sharath uh, described, Guidewire uh, offers uh, uh, multiple choices for uh, when it comes to the model uh, that customers can use. Um, and one of these choices is uh, neural networks. So um, Guidewire had a neural network engine that uh, uh, was being used uh, by uh, customers and uh, one of the, and also requested by many customers, um, uh, one of the, main things uh, that customer were seeing with that uh, model was inconsistency in the outputs of the model when the, uh, when the input is the same. And that was uh, coming from the fact that the model was uh, built on um, stochastic layers. So the, uh, the, the probabilistic uh, nature of, um, you know, runs for, uh, for different customers, basically they, they want to assign it uh, specific uh, distribution when do they want to run these neural network models. Um, and it was implemented as output layer in the previous uh, uh, neural network structure that was being used. And um, that, of course, inherently will uh, give different results every time that you send even the same uh, input. So um, my uh, task was to um, change that so that uh, basically we still be able to uh, incorporate the distribution of the um, 
uh, different distributions that customers want to try. Uh, but at the same time, we wanted to have consistent uh, inference uh, at the output. So uh, what I did basically was I uh, replaced uh, the structure of the, the probabilistic structure of neural network with the, uh, um, you know, deterministic one, uh, but then uh, implemented uh, the um, uh, all these uh, you know distribution related uh, things into the loss function um, uh, of uh, basically different layers. So that was how uh, th that work was uh, accomplished, and um, uh, you know this uh, basically this uh, helped uh, Guardwire to and also uh, we we put uh, back to the pipeline so that uh, using the help from uh, Guardwire engineering team uh, so that a, a neural network model now is in uh, place and can be used um, uh, by the customer so the, this model the the main difference now is that when uh, when an input goes uh, the same input goes to the same model uh, the output is always consistent and, uh, uh, you know, that is what the customers uh, were asking for. So um, I'll be happy to take any questions after that. Great. Uh, I think we came to the end of the presentation. And uh, if you want to learn more about GuideWide product, the platform and the product, uh, you are provided a link here. You guys can visit it. Thank you.